Hey everybody, this is Brian from Carving is Fun, and in this video I'm going to continue my mini-series on creating my own chess set by showing you how to make a bishop. Now the bishops are slightly more complex than the other ones we were doing, like the, the pawns and maybe even the, the knights as well. Uh, primarily because it's a little bit taller and there's going to be a little bit more angles and cuts you're going to want to put into it. It should only take between 25 minutes to 15 minutes to make one and you're only going to need four of them for the entire chess set. Now if you're carving along with the video at any time you need to pause, I will have a picture on the left hand side over here to show you what the current step is. So what we're going to need is your preferred whittling knives, a 1 inch by 1 inch by 3 inch tall piece of basswood or a 1 inch diameter wooden dowel cut to 3 inches in length and a pencil to make some marks on the wood with. Alright, so let's get started here. Now the first step is we're going to want to turn this into a round peg. Uh, if you already have a dowel, you can go ahead and skip this step and move on to the next step here. But all we're going to do here is simply round off the edges. We don't need to go too terribly crazy with it. Just round it off and then we're going to finish it up in the, feet, in the later steps here by adding more details to it. See, all we're doing is just rounding off the corners. We're not doing anything special. I went a little bit too much on this side. Wood grain was acting up a little bit here. But don't worry about it being perfect. Uh, I don't care about perfection and I just want it to look kind of nice. Uh, and even then I can still work around this since the tip is pretty much narrower than the bottom. So I'll just have my narrow, for me I'm just going to have my narrow end at the top uh, in the shape that around the head. But yeah, just don't worry about it if it's not absolutely perfect. You don't need to start over again if you accidentally take off too much wood. Each piece will be unique and I think that's part of the charm for handcrafting your own chess pieces here. Alright, so now that we have our block of wood rounded off, uh, we're going to start adding in reference lines. So the first one I like to add is uh, made by first finding about the middle point of your block and then just going a little bit above it. That's going to reference this line right here. Consider that your centralized line. And then above that line we're going to create a another line and a little bit further uh, down, past the middle, we're going to have uh, our another line here. Notice that these two are slightly different. I am having it so that this is a, a shallower or a steeper angle than this one because I want it to look more like a collar going around. So this is about the central line where this is right here, and then this is the base right here. And this is the bottom right here. And then I'm going to create another line just right above those. And those are reference like these two right here are referencing the bottom and the top right here. I like to leave a little bit of a space uh, for durability of the part because I don't want it to have a sharp angle and it start chipping off there. Same thing for right here. And then I'm going to reference the bottom. You can also do the same thing to the top as well because we're going to be putting a little nub on it but it really doesn't matter because uh, it's just going to be cut off eventually. Alright, so now that you have those lines made, I like to just roll the, the block around and draw the line all the way across. It helps me create a more even line and usually allows me to meet right back up with the other side. So I just do that for all the lines. Now that we got our lines all marked on here, we're going to start working our way from the bottom and going up. So first things first, we're going to create that bottom skirt right here. Uh, just We're going to create a stop cut. Ooh, get back my hands. We're going to create a stop cut on along this line and then work our way up cutting into it, creating a little triangular section there. Now your stop cut does not need to be too terribly deep at this point. Uh, you just need to make it deep enough where you can get the first layers. You're going to be going back and forth between slicing um, from this direction going into the stop cut and creating a deeper stop cut as you go along. It's more like an alternating kind of... Uh, pattern here. So now that I got my stop cut, I'm just going to start creating my first initial cuts. Some of these may not come off 
Um, it's probably because you cut a little bit further down past the stop cut, but that is fine. They'll eventually come off um, on their own, or you can just come back through and create a deeper stop cut. Like these guys didn't come off, just go ahead and create a deeper stop cut and repeat all the way around. So once you get that layer off, create a deeper stop cut, cutting off any excess that you didn't get. And then just continue doing the same pattern. And once you get up to the part where you can start cutting on a line, just start at that line that you made, the bottom reference line. Just start putting your blade into that part and slicing down to where your stop cut is. That's basically going to be your hard line for where you're going to stop cutting. All right, and then once you got it, that line made, just go around and clean it up. Maybe slope everything down just a little bit further or just even up your, your cut so that they're more uniform. Careful not to go too, uh, too much in there where you make the, the base here too spindly. That, that might just create a weak spot and it might end up breaking later on. There you go. That's good for right now. So now that we got our base carved out, we're going to start working in the middle section here. Uh, there is a little trick I like to do for this spot. Um, if you want, you can go around with your pencil and darken up your, your lines. Um, you can see that I've kind of rubbed some line off. So next what we're going to do here is create a stop cut on this middle line, which is creating this section right here. So basically what you're doing is you're creating a stop cut that goes down to the middle of this joint right here. So we're going to be doing a stop cut there and then we're going to start doing kind of a uh, slice and cut into it from both top and bottom. So stop cut made. I'm going to start from the line I made on this one and work my way down to the, the center stop cut. And once I made it all the way around, I'm going to flip it and then work my way from the other side. And this should free off most of it. Uh, most of those cuts that you've already made, don't worry about it being perfectly aligned with each other at this moment. This is just the initial rough cut. And if some of it doesn't come off, just come back from the other side and cut it off. Clean it up that way. See, it, it will look a little bit jagged, but that's fine for the initial stage. Because all we're going to be doing from here is cleaning it up and angle it in a little bit. So now I'm going to be working from the the bottom line right here, which is this reference point right there, and working my way towards the middle. And as I'm going in, I'm creating, I'm making the the angle into the wood a little bit steeper with each pass. So basically, I'm slowly carving into the wood. Um, creating those nice sharp angles. And again, I'm trying to focus on making the top part a little bit more uh, shallow than the bottom part there, which this is the top, this is the bottom. And I'm doing that because I want to create that little collar kind of look uh, around the head, like where this one is just a little bit more of a steeper angle than this one. I think it looks cool. You can make yours even if you want. That's completely your call. You might even have some that are uh, even some that aren't. That's perfectly fine. Each of, each of my different chess pieces have their own character to them. They're all a little bit different. And this bishop right here will be different from all the other ones that I made. That is normal. It is perfectly fine and it's the way that I personally like it myself. All right, eat start. And once you got it to about the point that you want, just go ahead and start evening it up a little bit. Even up your cuts, making them smoother. Get rid of any rough cuts that you made. Now that you got that done, we're gonna start working on the head. Now the head can be a little bit tricky. 
because um, you can tell it's a little bit slimmer than the head diameter is a little bit slimmer than the rest of the body. I did that intentionally. Um, you can also shape the top collar just a little bit thinner if you want it to. Completely your call. Uh, I didn't do it on some of the other ones. Uh, just didn't feel like doing it to be honest. But I'll do it on this one right here. Oh, nope. This is the one I'm carving. Get back up. Alright, so on that top line you made, right about here, we're going to be creating a stop cut right, right there. Going all the way around. This is going to create that top shelf that's basically holding the head on. Alright, and now that you have that top part done there, I'm going to do like we did with all the other ones and create an initial cut to that stop cut, removing some of the wood and outlining where we are going to be carving. Now the goal for this is at the beginning to create a longer, more like a long oblong uh, oval shape for the initial head and then that should leave us enough material to have these little uh, toppers on there. So we're going to make it a little bit more uh, oval shaped towards the top and then we're going to angle it in. But first we're going to work on the base towards the bottom. Alright, and then once we have the initial wedge shape going down, shaping the, doing a rough shape of the head, we're going to go in at a steeper angle towards the bottom, kind of rounding the head out a little bit. As you can see, it goes in a little bit more. So what we're going to do here is start from right about here, and then basically just go in at a steeper angle. This is going to create the rough outline for the bottom of the head, shaping it and curving it inwards. Just basically keep doing the alternating cut and stop cut thing we've been doing all along. And remove that wood there. There we go. As you can see, it looks more like a tulip now. But what we're going to do is start curving the head in. We're not going to have this as the full on diameter. We're going to make it a little bit skinnier and more uh, oval shaped like I said earlier. So what I like to do is go around from about here and just start removing a little bit of the wood going upwards and further rounding it out if possible. So make sure you're keeping it as round as possible going around here. All right, once we got it rounded out, we're going to start tapering the top of the, the head in a little bit. Like I said earlier, we're going to round it in. Um, it might be helpful for some of you to create a small circle near the middle as like a keep out zone because you don't want to cut it right to a tip. We're going to cut it to about that circle. For, I already cut this section off so mine's a little bit more oblong than yours will probably be. But that's about the center there. So I'm going to just start tapering it in to about that line that I just made. Mine looks a little bit funky right now but that is fine. We're not yet done shaping the head so don't worry about it if it looks a little bit weird at this moment. All right, now that we have this little teardrop shape that we have here and we cut to that little keep out zone we just made, what we're gonna do is start cutting down towards the head in this direction right here. Uh, we're gonna do this all the way around. We're not gonna do it right at the line. We're gonna do it just a little bit below the line all the way around. That way we have a little bit of room. We're not doing very deep cuts. We're just doing shallow cuts all the way around the top there. It's almost like we're starting to create like a rose petal kind of a design going in here but we're going to be removing this excess wood so maybe if the camera can see it but I've made cuts all the way around and then I'm going to be going back up kind of at a rounder angle coming in from this direction going up into this little point that I've made. 
and this is going to create that little nub on the top. Make sure you're not applying too much pressure to this point or you might actually cut off the entire nub. If you're using uh, some thicker knives, you might want to take it slower than what I'm doing here. I have a nice thin and very sharp knife so that it, it's allowing me to so it's allowing me to cut in there much, much more smoothly. So once I got that, I'll just clean it up a little bit. Alright, and then now that I got that, I'm just gonna clean up the top so it looks a little bit nicer. Remove some of my pencil marks and cut across the grain with my knife there. Make it a little bit cleaner looking. Now that we got that detail added in here, we're going to do a couple more little fun things. One, I'm going to angle back these flat surfaces, uh, primarily because it takes my wood stain a little bit better. Um, if you have a flat surface against uh, going along all the grain, sometimes I've found that the wood stain does not fully penetrate like it did on these uh, the rooks here, I have some lighter marks on there. The The bottom base here was cut back a little bit, but you can see there's a little bit of a difference between the top where it was straight up and down and the bottom where it was cut back at a minor angle. We're not making it too terribly steep of an angle, just enough that it's cutting across the grains to allow the, the stain to get in there. I'm going to do that on all these flat surfaces right here. Alright, and now the last finishing touch we're going to do is that this little wedge thing that I see on a lot of bishops' uh, chess pieces. I don't know exactly what it is. I always thought it was a mouth when I was a kid. Um, but this is just going to be a simple chew slice thing. We're going to do a push cut going in in one angle and then coming in from the top. Just basically we're cutting off a little wedge here. So it will kind of look like a mouth. Maybe it has something to do with their, like a bishop's hat or something, I don't know. There we go. Super simple cut. Easy to do. And now we're going to start applying our coats. Get everything cleaned up here. First I'm going to be using some beeswax paste to seal and chew my bishops. Uh, just what I have, you can either use acrylic paints, you can use a uh, lighter color stain, it doesn't matter. But all you're doing is just applying some the beeswax paste and let it sit for a couple of minutes. And then you're going to take a rag and buff off any of the excess on there. This will create a nice shiny look and make it so that you don't have all the extra goop that's sitting on there. Make sure you get all the little crevices too. And there you go. Once you have them all, all the excess buffed off, we're going to can move on to adding the wood finish. So for this stuff, you're going to want to wear some gloves. This makes it so you don't get wood stain all over your hands. And just go ahead and give it a shake and then open it up. So this stuff is just simple. I'm only going to be putting on one, one layer up for these guys. Dip it in there and just start coating it. I'm using some Minwax uh, wood finish. This one is the dark walnut. Uh, I, it's what I had available. I think it looks fine. You can use whatever colors you guys want. And there we go. And once you have them all covered, let your your stains sit for about two to four hours, depending on what your uh, bottle says and make sure it fully dries before you go off and start using it or touching it. So also in the next videos we're going to be doing, I'm going to be doing the king and queens. I already got them started going on here and after that I'm completely done making all the chess pieces. And then afterwards I had a couple of you guys ask me to make up my own uh, chess board. So I'm going to just make a, a simple one that I think most anyone can do with uh, whatever tools you have, whether it just be your your own whittling knives or maybe you have some v-gouges or chisels or something like that you can use those as well thanks for watching guys hope you have yourselves a great day